Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to set up an endurance wheel system like we have in Zelda Breath of the Wild or more recently Tears of the Kingdom. In those games, this circular energy bar defines what actions the character is able to perform. Running, climbing, jumping or attacking decrease this wheel and when it reaches zero, the player can no longer perform those actions. As you'll see, this system is really easy to implement and it will only take us a few minutes. Let's start from scratch. To set up this system, the first thing we'll need is this image. This will be our base for the different wheels. There is a download link for this image in the description. Let's import it in the project and configure it as an UI image. And hit apply. We are now ready for the first part of this tutorial, setting up the visuals. We can start by adding an image in our scene. Game object, UI, image. Rename this object stamina wheel and then drag and drop our wheel image into source image. We can now set up the color of this wheel. It will be black and with an opacity of about 0.7. This first wheel will act as a background. As you've seen in the introduction, when the green wheel starts to shrink, the background is slowly appearing. Then we can duplicate this object with Ctrl D. You can rename it red wheel and change its color accordingly. Again, as you've seen in the demonstration, when the green wheel shrinks, it is followed by a small red part indicating that the character's energy is being used. Let's make this red wheel a child of the stamina wheel object, so you can just drag and drop it onto the first object. Then you can change the image type from simple to filled. What interests us in this filling mode is the fill amount. If we start changing this value, you can see that the result does look like something we want. So we'll have to play with this value to increase or decrease the content of the wheel. But as you already know, our real endurance wheel is supposed to be green. So let's duplicate the red one and rename it green wheel. And we can again change its color accordingly. Be careful of the order in the hierarchy, the red wheel is supposed to be above the green one. This is very important because the last object of the list is always displayed on top of the others. Now that everything is in place, let's start working on the technical part. Select the stamina wheel object and create and add a new script with the same name. We'll need both the start and update methods. But first, let's start by adding some variables. First, we need a way to track the current endurance or stamina of our player. Let's use a simple float variable for this. Then to fill this stamina over time, we need a way to cap it so it does not increase too much. Let's add a max value for our stamina and we'll assign a default value of 100. When the game starts, in the start method, we want our current stamina to be maxed, so let's make it equal to max stamina. Now that we have our values for the endurance, we need a way to display them in the visuals. For that, we'll need to import unityengine.ui, and then we can create two references, one for our green wheel and one for our red wheel. Now we need a way to actually change the current stamina value by sprinting, for example. So in the update method, I'll check for an input on my left shift key. Be mindful of writing input.getKey and not get key down, because we want to read this condition as long as the key is pressed. Now let's say that if our stamina is above zero, then we can sprint, we can consume it. I'll be using the same value that I've used in the demonstration, which was 30, but you can increase it to decrease the stamina faster 
or on the opposite, you can decrease this value to decrease the stamina slower. Then we'll multiply this value by time dot delta time to decrease it over time. Now for the opposite case, when we are not sprinting, if our stamina is below the max stamina value, we should fill it up. Then, just before the end of the update method, we can now send our current stamina value to the green wheel to display it visually. For that, as we saw earlier, we'll use the fill amount, and because the fill amount is a value between 0 and 1, we can simply divide our current stamina by max stamina, which will result in a value between 0 and 1 depending on the filling state of our current stamina. Let's head back in Unity, fill our two variables red wheel and green wheel, and then you can just press play and test the first version of the system. By holding the shift key, we can see that the green bar is indeed decreasing over time, and if I let go the key, the stamina will slowly fill up. So our system is working quite well, but we can still improve it. Let's also decrease the red wheel, but with a bit of an offset. When consuming stamina, the base operation is the same. We want our red wheel fill amount to be stamina divided by max stamina. But as I said, let's also add a small offset. I found that 0.06 or 0.07 works quite well. And then when we are not consuming any stamina, we should also increase the red wheel fill amount. But this time we don't need any offset because we don't want to see any red part when the stamina is filling up. Head back in Unity and press play. As expected, when the energy is being consumed, we have a small red part indicating that the green wheel is in use. When we let go the shift key, the stamina is slowly filling up again, and this time there is no red mark. So this is quite good. Let's add one final change to our system. There is a small particularity in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, which is that if the entire stamina is consumed, so when the green wheel is fully empty, the player can no longer use stamina as long as it is not completely full again. I really hope my explanations are clear. But in a way, we want to force the regeneration of the stamina to 100% and block its usage while it's filling up, even if the player is trying to use the shift key. Let's go back in our script and add a new boolean variable called stamina exhausted. Now, there will be two conditions for our player to sprint. He needs to press the left shift key, but also the stamina has to be not exhausted. Then, when we are consuming stamina and that there are no stamina left, this same variable will become true. We consumed it entirely. And when our stamina is slowly building up again, when it is equal or superior to our max stamina, the variable will become false again. And that's actually all we need. We can head back in Unity and try our system again. Now, when our stamina is a bit consumed, but not entirely, we can let go the shift key and press it again. Our stamina will decrease from its current value. But if we consume our stamina entirely, you'll see that it will be forced to regenerate over time despite using the left shift key. On a technical point of view, it's working. But there is a small game design issue with the current visual. When the stamina is entirely consumed and being forced to be filled again, we should not display it in green. Because the player has already associated the green color to the stamina being available and consumable. Which here is not the case. But fortunately, there is an easy fix for that. When our stamina is being entirely consumed, we can just hide the green wheel, and then, when the stamina is available again, we can enable it back. Let's head back in Unity one last time to try the entire system, and everything should be working. And that's about it.
All you have to do now is to implement and connect this system in your own projects. I hope you guys liked this tutorial. If you did, please remember to leave a like. This is very important for me. Drop a comment. This is very important for the channel. All of the comments are really appreciated. And if you are interested in seeing more tutorials in the future, consider subscribing. Thank you for watching. See you guys soon. Cut friend out.